welcome everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, this call is being recorded so that for anyone that would like to replay it, you're welcome to. However, I'd like to remind everybody about the requirements of live attendance. Today we have a pretty full meeting, uh, but of course it's a beautiful day, so we're going to try to keep it nice and, and tight and short. We're going to start out with roll call for our cadets. And then we'll get into some current events, just an update on COVID-19 and other areas. We're gonna also talk about cadet programs and the fact that we should have active participation in this meetings. Um, we do have a safety briefing, a CDI, and of course, we'll follow up with the aerospace education project. Towards the end, we'll share a few final thoughts from our major, if he's available, and some announcements. So with that said, I'm gonna call on Cadet Lieutenant Pastoriza, would you please take roll call? Okay, good morning, everybody. Starting with the Cadet Roll Call, Cadet Airman Abreu, Cadet Daniel Escamilla, Cadet Braylon De Jesus, oh, yeah. Cadet Nathaniel Figueroa, yeah. Cadet Gomez, Cadet Senior Master Sergeant Gonzalez, uh, she's excused to uh, do work. Cadet Guerrero. Cadet Airman Hernandez. Present. Cadet Staff Sergeant Alasco. Visitor Aaron Figueroa. Here. Next is Cadet First Lieutenant Pastorisa. I'm present. Cadet Staff Sergeant Jaylene Rivera Borges. She did text me she's having trouble joining, and her sister's actually going to be excused for Camila. Okay. Cadet Staff Sergeant Rodriguez. Here. Cadet Airman Rojas. Cadet Staff Sergeant Roman. Uh, Roman's excuse as well. He won't be joining today. Cadet Zalazar. Cadet Staff Sergeant Santos. Here. Cadet Airman Smalls. Present. Cadet Staff Sergeant Velez. Here. And Visitor Gia Figueroa. Here. First Lieutenant Velas. All cadets accounted for. I'm sure everybody's here. All right. So at this time, sir, uh, Major Centron. Um, I'd like for you to introduce your guest. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, this morning I have uh, a visitor. He's, he's, he's uh, used to be a former cadet. He achieved uh, his Mitchell Award, and I'm trying to bring him into the squadron. He, I think he's, he's coming with good experience and everything. So I'm going introduce, to introduce to you um, Gregory Butler. So Butler, um, uh, please introduce yourself. I'll take a few minutes and, and give a little bit about your background. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everybody. Uh, like Major Simpson said, my name is Greg Butler. I was a former cadet. I joined TAP at the age of 12 uh, back in the 1990s. Um, I continued my cadet career uh, all the way up through 21. I did receive my Mitchell. Um, I was very involved in emergency services. I was involved with the drill team and honor guards for New Jersey. I also did like uh, solo school. I was commander of solo school, um, so I was a very active cadet. Um, I did later on become a senior member and stayed active with the squadron, including uh, the Camden squadron for a little while as it, it bounced around to different areas. Um, and now I'm at a point in my life where I'm able to come back again. So that's what I'm looking to do: is come back and give back to CAP and help the cadets out the way that CAP helped me when I was a cadet. So, that, that's a little bit about me. <laughs> well, thank you, Butler. And like I say, um, once I trigger it out, um, how I can get you into the roster, um, I will definitely uh, contact you, give you a phone call, and figure out how, how we're doing um, once I check with um, Marianne about um, the fingerprint part. Um, that we got to do. So um, like I say, um, you're quite invited every time um, until we can get you into our meetings on Saturdays. Um, it's the same, it's the same format we use every Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning. And like I say, everybody welcome um, our new prospective senior to join the squadron. And like I say, he brings a lot of experience into the program too. So once again, thank you, Butler. Thank you, sir. All right, Lieutenant Pastorisa, you can take over. Excellent, thank you and welcome. Next, uh, we're gonna speak a little bit about current events. There's a few things that we wanna share. Um, 
First, I, I want to talk about, you know, just the fact that we have additional members who are participating in the progress with the COVID-19 mission. Uh, so I want to just give a notable mention for those that have already completed it. Great job. You've earned the disaster relief ribbon. But that just goes to say that many of you who haven't yet participated, it's optional. If you wish to participate, there's several different ways for you to get involved. We talked about them last week, and if you'd like, you can you know, reach out to any of your senior members or your cadet leader, um, and of course, get additional information that way. Ad added to the progress of the disaster relief ribbon, we do have our cadet airman, Malcolm Smalls. Malcolm, do you have any words to share? Can you tell us a little bit of what, about what you're working on? Uh, I'm making masks for people who don't have any, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, cool. I think you gave us a number of how many you were able to actually create. Do you have an update for us? Currently, it's at 60. That's great. That means 60 people who may have not had masks now have masks. That's awesome. Thank you for doing that. I'd like to next uh, ask if we have Cadet Sergeant Shania Rodriguez on the call. Can you tell us about what you're doing for the mission? Um, so I'm also creating a mask for those who don't have any masks. I have a count of 90 masks. Wow, that's great. Um, if you are thinking that you're not able to complete them in any way, we're, we're here to help you, so just let us know. That's a great thing that you accepted 90 mass. That's great. Good job. I do know that Major Salmonson joined us as well. Major, would you like to share any words? Uh, yes, I, I dropped off the uh, two masks to the uh, two cadets that were uh, talking about it. And I'm um, uh, just cutting up the, uh, the sheets, which is supposed to be about uh, six by nine. Cool. Or nine by six. Excellent. So for all three of you guys, if you have any pictures of, of what you're doing for the mission, if you'd like to share them uh, with us, we can highlight them next week. Just know that what you guys are doing is truly making a difference in the mission, so good job. At this time, I'd like to open it up to see if any of the cadets or any senior members who are listening, if you have any questions. All right, fair enough. Um, I didn't want to bring up all the slides that we had last week, but if you guys have, need the information, we're here and uh, we can send it over to you. All right, so now I'd like to uh, bring in the next topic of our agenda, which is safety. And for that, I'd like to bring in our second lieutenant, um, Olivo. Can you share this information with us at this time? Yes, I can. Thank you, Lieutenant Pastor. Sure. All right, so good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today I'll be giving you your monthly safety brief, which uh, for the topic of this month, it'll be uh, heat safety. So as you know, uh, we're starting to get into mid-May, which means summer's right around the corner. And as we saw yesterday, when it was in the uh, mid to high 80s, uh, it's gonna get hot and it's gonna get humid. And um, luckily we're all stuck inside, so we can't really go out. But once we start opening things up, uh, it's gonna be getting warmer and we're gonna be doing all of our activities mostly outside, which means wearing very warm uniforms. And I'm gonna go over some of the safety issues with all that. So, uh, can you skip to the six slides from stage of it? So these are the typical things that we would do as outdoor activities. Uh, you can see we'll be training, uh, encampment, which hopefully some of you cadets will be going to uh, in some point in July or August. Um, emergency service training, so, flying or uh, ground team. PT is a big one, doing PT outside. Uh, it's much better than doing it inside. Uh, for ceremonial, you would be doing color guard, drill team, honor guards, or just practicing outside with rifles, or just uh, marching up and down. Uh, same thing for operational stuff, so disaster relief. Uh, air show support, all this stuff takes place outside. So here's a heat index. So as you can see, um, uh, as, the, as the temperature gets higher, uh, the index gets gets more dangerous. So the higher the temperature is and the higher the humidity is, uh, the higher the exposure rate is going to be. So um, sunburn is still going to affect you even though you're going to be wearing a uniform, most likely ABUs or BDUs. Uh, but if you have your sleeves rolled up, your neck is still vulnerable, 
uh, your hands and your arms are still vulnerable and your face is still vulnerable, even if you're wearing a cover or some type of hat. So make sure that uh, if you're prone to sunburn, if you have some type of condition that make you prone to sunburn, make sure you wear uh, sunscreen. Make sure that you, uh, if there's some type of shade around you, make sure you at least pop in there a little bit before you uh, before you come back out into the sun. Uh, sunglasses are a big thing. Make sure you're wearing, if you can, make sure you can wear sunglasses. At encampment for those cadets and senior members that are going to be going, summer is going to be a big issue for the most part, especially when you're doing PT because uh, Joint Base McGuire is, is very open, especially the PT field. There's no, there's not much, there's a, there's a, there's a cover there. But for the most part, you're going to be doing PT and running on the track, which is open. So make sure that uh, if you have, like I said, a skin condition, you're at least applying some type of uh, some type of uh, lotion that can help you with that. Uh, all right, hydration is a big key. So make sure that you're always bringing some type of uh, fluids with you, uh, especially water or Gatorade, uh, especially if you're doing some type of high intensity training or high intensity stuff. Gatorade is really good because the electrolytes are, of course, going to replenish all the energy and salt that you lost. Um, but water is key. So uh, when you go to an encampment, um, you will likely either be having some type of canteen that you can fill up, or you'll, you'll have a, a what's called camelback, which is essentially a backpack that you can fill up with water, and it has a tube that runs down the side, and you can essentially just drink whatever you want to. But uh, hydration is very key. You should be drinking at least, uh, I'd say, maybe five to eight cups of water or equivalent to that um, because you will lose a lot of water as you're running, as you're walking. You're going to be out, you're going to be up 16 hours a day for the most part, 14 to 16 hours a day um, at encampment. So you're going to be burning through all that and you're only eating every six hours. So water is essential for you to be able to continue through the whole um, encampment curriculum which is about five to seven days. Um, I remember when I went through it, water was a big issue for me because I just I simply didn't drink it. I was too focused on other things. So make sure you drink water or Gatorade, or at least you're putting fluids inside your body so you can replenish. Uh, heat cramp uh, isn't something that a lot of people get. Uh, however, I've seen I've seen heat cramps a couple of times. Uh, typically, it's going to be your first sign of some type of heat-related illness. The most common being heat exhaustion or heat stroke. And usually what happens with heat cramps is uh, you get cramps, um, particularly in your legs and your abdomen. So uh, mainly around the area where your stomach is, your abs, and your lower body. That's where you get uh, most of the cramps from. It's extremely painful and you sweat a lot. Uh, treatment for heat cramps would usually be relax for a little bit, get out of the sun, get to someplace cool, uh, try to massage or apply some type of cream in the area that hurts. And again, drink a lot of water. So these are the common heat. These are the two most common heat uh, heat related illnesses, which is heat exhaustion. Essentially, it's when you, you spend too much time out in the in the sun doing too much. So you sweat, you sweat a lot, uh, you get you get very weak, pale, uh, you have a very weak pulse, muscle cramps, dizziness, uh, either you're either nauseous or you're vomiting, and you could potentially faint. I've seen a lot of a lot of cadets um, at a uh, at encamp in faint because the, the sunlight is just too intense. So treatment for heat exhaustion again is you have to move the person away from from the the environment that's warm and put them in some place that's cold. So potentially back inside a building where there's AC or at a minimum underneath some type of covering that provides at least some some sort of shade. Uh, you just want to lay them down if you can. Uh, maybe take off their jacket, take off their boots apply some type of wet bandage on their, their head, their forehead, so they can cool down. Uh, drink a lot of water, again, Gatorade, water, very important. And uh, if, if, if they throw up more than one, then that's when you would take them to either the base doctor or some type of medical uh, attention. Heat stroke is a, is a, is a little bit more uh, intense and complicated than, a, than, a, than the first one. Uh, a heat stroke. Usually what cause usually what happens with a heat stroke is uh, a person becomes very disoriented. Uh, they almost seem drunk in a way. Uh, they, they can stumble around, not be coherent. Usually uh, the following symptoms would, would occur. So you either, either have a very big headache or some type of uh, migraine. Uh, you'd be confused, like I said. You'd be nauseous, dizzy, 
and you probably wouldn't be breathing very well. Uh, your skin would either be very warm, very red, dry, or moist, depending on the person. You'd either have a very rapid pulse, and you could also potentially lose consciousness, like a lot of cadets have happened. So heat shock is, is very severe. I mean, if somebody, if you think somebody is having a heat shock, or you see someone having a heat shock, you need to you need to either call medical uh, services like an ambulance or take them to a hospital, but they need they need to be treated right away. And uh, do not give them any water because that's just going to make it worse. But try to move them into uh, a place that, that's cooler. You need to lower that body temperature because heat stroke is essentially you having a, a very warm body temperature. Uh, so dehydration. Uh, again, like I said, you need to drink a lot of water or a lot of gator. You need to be hydrated all the time. Even if you don't want to drink water, even, even if you think yeah, you've had enough water, you probably haven't had enough water. So if you're dehydrated, your mouth is going to be dry. Uh, you're gonna, you're not going to be going to the bathroom as often as you should. If you're, if you're drinking enough water, enough Gatorade, you should be going to the bathroom maybe every two hours, uh, perhaps even every hour, depending. Um, your skin is going to be dry because, again, you're not getting that moisture into your skin that you need. Probably going to be constipated because again you're not getting that water, which doesn't help with all the stomach movements. You're likely going to be dizzy and you're going to have a headache because again, water is important. Your your, your body is made up with 70% of water, so make sure you drink water. And so what the P the P chart is, it sounds kind of gross, but essentially, if, if you're able to look at your urine, if it's if it's very dark, you're not hydrated. You're dehydrated. Uh, if it's medium to light color, then you're Kind of okay. You should probably drink it more. And if it's if it's clear, then you're good. You're drinking enough water. It might sound weird, but honestly, it's probably the best thing you can do to make sure that you're you're hydrated. It's because it's, it's visible. So here's some guidelines that you should that you should follow. So you should likely drink water one to two hours before um, whatever activity you're going to go on, and it should be at least eight to sixteen ounces of cold water, which is essentially a cup or two of water. And then you should just probably drink again. The same amount of water uh, 10 to 15 minutes before your activity so for example if you're going to pt as soon as you wake up you should drink water uh once you arrive at the pt location you should again drink a little bit of water don't drink too much because you could be cramps but make sure you're drinking enough water so that way uh drink pt you're not dehydrated and during the activity you should also be drinking a minimal amount of water so that way you can you can keep uh the balance of all that water in there and then after after you've done that PT or whatever activity it is, you should again um, drink water so you can correct uh, your 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 fluid intake. And here's some just some resources on uh, both heat heat indexes as well as uh, just sources on water, nutrition, all that stuff. If you need any more information about all that, um, I will be doing a safety brief specifically for outside activities and in, uh, encampment sometime around uh, early July, so that way um, the cadets and state uh, senior members that will be attending in Canada know how to um, manage all that because, again, it's very intense. You're going to be out you're going to be out there 16 hours a day for the most part. You're going to be out there 16 hours a day. You're going to be running in and out of buildings, and you know, you're going to be a little bit stressed, and that can all cause you to, to have uh, you know, some type of illness. So, again, make sure you're hydrating. Make sure you're sitting out of the sunlight. Make sure you're applying some type of cream or ointment if you're prone to, to sunburn. Uh, make sure you're eating well. Uh, but I'll cover mo most of this uh, in more detail when that time comes. Uh, so that's all I got. Thank you, everyone, for coming in today. And I hope you enjoy the rest of uh, your session. So thank you, Lieutenant Olivo. That was very helpful, especially uh, for a day like today. It's so, so beautiful and warm outside. Sometimes we forget to take care of ourselves. Um, I just want to hold you for a moment to ask, do, do we have any of our cadets on the call or even senior members that have a question? All right. And Lieutenant Olivo, could you just tell um, everyone about the requirement for a safety briefing? Uh, sure. So um, make sure, so the requirement is supposed to be uh, attending, there's, there's, there's one safety uh, brief every month. So uh, the safety officer is required to give one safety brief a month. So uh, usually that'll be uh, anywhere in between those four Saturdays. So just make sure you're paying attention to the schedule because you do need to attend these safety briefs um, at a minimum once a month. Um, you have to actually physically be at the meeting. 
um, I can't just send you the slides and, and, and add you to the roster. So what I do is after after this meeting, I'll look at all the uh, I'll look at the roster and then I'll add your names to the um, I have to upload a safety a safety brief online on the e-services, and that's how uh, everybody is uh, categorized. You won't see it, but I will see it, and the, the squadron commander uh, and deputy commander will see it. Uh, so the way you get credit again is just by attending attending safety. All right. Well done. Thank you again. Thank you. All right, so everyone, uh, just so you know, I have been updating the roster. So for uh, two of the cadets that have joined, um, although you joined a little bit late, I did update and show that you are present. Thank you for letting us know. All right, so now I'd like to switch it over to our CDI lesson. And for that, I'd like to introduce to you Colonel Maldonado. Good morning, everybody. Yes, we can hear you. Just okay. okay. Good morning. Just want to be sure. Okay, uh, everybody see today, we are going to be um, talking about wellness during crisis, resiliency. This is the title for our class for the month of May. Um, what we understand by resiliency, it is the, the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties and, and toughness. Um, Right now, uh, are we reading the National Commander Letter dated 2nd April 2020, which discussed CAP activity during the COVID-19 pandemic? His request for engagement and his experience with um, self-care or wellness emphasize the commander's um, suggestions that perhaps these five pillars can be helpful for you too. Um, the letter reads like this. It said, Dear Civil Air Patrol, volunteers and staff, greetings. I hope that you and your loved one are healthy, um, persevering through these unique, challenging times we find ourselves in. Civil Air Patrol's role is steadily growing in helping community state and nation during the coronavirus pandemic. As of yesterday, we have 12 wins and 638 people supporting 17 active missions. We are being asked to support a wide of variety of tasks ranging from helping with food distribution to underserved children to transporting critical supplies to outline facilities, to providing aerial imaging of COVID-19 response resources. I am proud of our volunteers, and I am proud of our one team national staff of employees and volunteers who are tirelessly working to facilitate civil Air Patrol success. We, members of Civil Air Patrol, are strong, resilient, innovative, and have a passion for service. However, we are not immune to the pressures that weigh down on everyone during this unique time frame. That is why I asked you last week to focus on engagement, reaching out to your fellow CIP members and employees to make sure they were doing well and to help when they might be struggling. I'm going to add another dimension to my ask of you for this week. My ask is that each of us pause and do a self-assessment of how we are doing how I am standing up to the pressures I am facing. Am I coping okay? Am I struggling? If so, what might I be able to do to regain a healthy perspective? First, if I am struggling, I have learned through personal experience the wisdom of reaching out for help something really important. 
there is no shame in reaching out for help. As I learned, and that's the commander talking, as I learned when I was my wise caregiver for years, for many years, sorry. I have also learned the wisdom of self-care or wellness. A team of smart people developed civil patrols, five pillars of wellness and resilient program. The program focuses on five pillars of wellness and resilience, mind, body, relationships, spirit, and family, as illustrated in the picture. I have incorporated these five pillars of wellness and resilience into my self-care, and I have noticed a significant improvement in my well-being. Perhaps these five pillars can be helpful for you too. Be well, be safe, and thank you for what you do in saving air patrol. Sincerely, Mark e. Smith, Major General, CAP. Thank you so much. And then now, we're gonna continue with the class. Um, uh, we all know uh, before, we all previously studied all the five pillars with um, their definition. And I remember we talked about the importance of each one. Um, right now, if you see in front of you, you're gonna see the first two pillars that is already done, but I just want to do like a little account of the first two, the first two, and we will continue with today's, which will be the third pillar. On this one on mine, remember, we need to be emotionally prepared. We need to be aware, uh, learning aware or aware learning. We uh, have to have adaptability. Um, we need to make sure uh, on decision making. That's when we're talking about mind. If we are talking about body, we need to remember that we need to rest really good. We have to have a really good nutrition. And we're talking about a really well um, diet. We need recreation in order to keep our body um, um, working well. And physical fitness is so important. Next one, please. On the next one, this is what we are going to be um, studying today. We're going to present. It, I'm going to be presenting the pillar of relationships, and this is number three. The first thing I would like to mention that is something really important. At the bottom, you see foundation is one of the civil air patrol. We need to remember that we are only one civil air patrol, and that's the foundation of the five pillars. When we see the first one on the relationship pillar, we're going to be uh, mentioning something important that has to do with communication. We all know that communication is really important in every way. Communication can only happen when individuals reach out to others. The ability to share what is cleaned by personal emotional awareness is very critical. It's a critical skill. We need to keep that in mind. Communication is always so important. Communication, the human connection is the key to personal and career success. That's uh, from Mr. Paul J. Mayer. Connectness is the ability to trust others in a way that lets them see our needs and concerns. So if we connect with other people, we can know, we can see what is the needs you know, for the other people, um, actually they're concerned. So in that way, we can be there to helping them. Social support. On social support is having at least one individual in their life that they know they can reach out to 
and receive attention and support when in a weak position or in a crisis. So remember, social support, when we're talking about our third pillar, is really important. We need to be there and socialize with people in order, order to help them. The last one, it said teamwork. Teamwork is the glue that allows the task and mission of the Civil Air Patrol to be accomplished in an efficient manner. There is no CAP mission that will not achieve better results with additional eyes to watch and hands to help. So remember, teamwork always, hold on, I have something in my Teamwork is always so important. We work as a teamwork all the time. If we are divided, if we are separate, if we are not in, you know, in the same agreement, we cannot work as a teamwork. So keep in mind that it's so important as a CAP member, as one civil air patrol, we work as a teamwork. Next one, please. Thank you. In here, uh, we all see, understand the five pillars. Please share one thing, and this is uh, for the cadets. Please share one thing that has changed you or changed for you during the COVID-19 pandemic. Here, what I'm gonna do, I would like the participation <laughs> for the cadets on the questions, um, the discussion probe that I have for you in order to participate with the um, class today. The first one is asking, is there, or is stress always a bad thing? I would like one of the cadets, I don't have the list of the cadet with sure. me, I'm gonna try to see from, sure. let me see if I can. So at this time, uh, cadets, listen up. There's a question that Colonel Maldonado wants us to answer. And the question is right here. Do you think that stress is always a bad thing? Go ahead and unmute your line and answer that. Hi, Maldonado. This is Cadet Rivera Borgi. And my answer to that is no, it's not always a bad thing because it kind of pushes you to do more. So you're always on your feet. Yes, thank you. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, we cannot let the stress to control us. We need to use the stress to think, what should I do and how I'm going to do something that in that moment, it is so stressful for you and not sitting down and crying and say, okay, I'm not going to do nothing. I'm going to sit in here. I don't know what to do is to try yeah, to push yourself to do better. And, and that's exactly, yeah one of the answers that I have in here. Okay, I don't see the questions. Oh, okay, the next one, and I would like to have another cadet to participate um, on this one. How can you tell when someone is handling stress poorly? Hi, this is Cadet Velez. Um, when someone is handling stress poorly, they wanna give up and like not accomplish something anymore. Yes, yes. Why? Because the person is not like moving, is not making a decision, you know, of doing what we supposed to do. And actually people around can see. Uh, and I said that because I actually have a member of my family that I love with all my heart. But this is one of the things that she cannot do. When she go under any type of stress, she goes completely to herself and she just do this, put her hands up and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I cannot deal with that. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Someone is take care. And that is a big, good demonstration of a person that is handling stress poorly, not knowing what to do. Um, that's exactly, yeah, the, the, a, a good answer. Thank you so much. The next one. How can you tell when someone, and this is the opposite, when someone is handling stress well? 
anyone else, please. Hi, this is Hi, this is If someone's handling stress well, they are uh, like not getting back up on their feet and doing it again and again. Could could you add something else? Uh, they're not giving up. Exactly. So that means it's the opposite of the other one. You see that person going on their probably like like you guys when when. When you guys working with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic and you go to those places, uh, you know, to prepare the food and put it in boxes and, and doing whatever you guys doing, I'm pretty sure that in a way you can see stress all around. Um, it's really, really good, really nice when you see that you are under that type of stress and what you're doing is asking, the first thing asking, what should I do? How can I manage this better? That means that you gonna handle handling the stress well by doing what you're supposed to do and actually asking that if I myself uh, see myself under a lot of stress um, if, and I feel like sh shutting down, what the first thing what I'm gonna do actually, yeah, is gonna be I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna ask, you know, Lord, and, you know, this, this is something like it's too much for me. Uh, could you help me out? Give me the wisdom. Give me the knowledge of how I'm going to do this. And the other thing is asking to someone else to help me out, you know, to develop probably a, a, a different way of doing things and not like, you're, yeah, you're showing myself. Okay, next. Thank you so much to all you three. I have, I think, four more questions on the next um, slide. Okay, CIP has recently adapted an approach to handling stress called the five pillars of awareness and resiliency and that's exactly what we continually are um, doing during this week okay can you name the five pillars someone who can remember the five pillars as a team as a, as a team we should be able to get them all together so uh, somebody named one of the pillars um one of them i think was mind yes Next one. Why that is, you can put that uh, if you want the the PowerPoint that have all the five names and they can see it from there. That's okay with me. Sure thing. Give me one moment. It's in the letter, or I think it's number A or number nine. I just what I try to do is not make everybody see them all, so I'm just gonna hide a okay. few and I'll bring it up in here. That's okay. That's not it. And this one. There you go. That's going to be the homework. Okay. Do you want me to go back to the second slide where the letter is at? Um, no, that's okay. I would like uh, anyone over there, like right now, to mention the five, uh, the name for the five pillars. Uh, now everything is in blank. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's okay. So we have all of them over there. Can anyone mention? The five pillars? Um, the five pillars are mind, body, relationship, spirit, and family. Thank you so much. Okay, please keep that in mind because remember we've been doing this. Uh, we've been talking about um, these pillars. I remember um, starting January 220 because I, I'm pretty sure that was my first like deep class that I bring all the remember the PowerPoint and I bring um, the board and I bring a lot of stuff. Uh, I was doing that I think for a, I think three different times according to the way the National Commander wants CDI to present it. Okay, so the next one is said, can anyone identify at least three specific behaviors that reinforce or support each pillar? And I would like to have a different cadets whatever you remember, identify three specific behaviors that reinforce or support each pillar. Does anyone remember the first pillar, the pillar of mind? Do you remember adaptability, decision-making? I, I think you can, you can answer according to that if you want it. Just want to make sure that you guys understand what, where we are. 
let's put it this way. Can anyone give me three specific behaviors for uh, the first pillar? Mind that reinforce or support support the pillar of mind. Any type of behavior, positive behavior. The question is the second one right here in the list. We're looking for someone who can identify at least three specific behaviors that reinforce or support at least one of the pillars. Let's hear from someone who hasn't spoken yet. I think they probably don't, do not understand the question. That's probably why, because if nobody answered. Possible. Yeah, when we're talking about a specific behavior, let's say we're talking about, about the mind. Think about a really, and let's put it this way, a positive behavior of, you know, something that has to do with your mind. Like in my own words, if I'm going to answer that, a positive behavior that reinforce or support the pillar of mind, it's going to be, I should keep my mind like clear of, you know, any type of negative uh, situation or stuff that is not going to help me thinking in a positive way that's that's an example because if i say everything then i'm going to be answered other questions and that's the idea for them to think uh, um you know and answer the question and you know mm -hmm. make sure that they mm -hmm. understand what we're doing so colonel so, we do have an answer um gianni figueroa she's one of our visitors soon to be a cadet she has answered the question saying honesty courage and knowledge who was that gianni figueroa oh okay 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 that's good uh can anyone give me something with the pillar let's say the pillar of spirit Let, let's let's try to say something about perseverance what anyone can tell me with the pillar of spirit that had to do with the perseverance. Um, having a positive spirit can help you continue to try rather than letting yourself down. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, can anyone say something or tell me something about the pillar of body? Could be anything about rest, about the nutrition, recreation, or physical fitness. A specific behavior. Hi, I would just say keeping your body healthy and and basically getting the rest that you need. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that is really, really important. Okay, let's move on for the, which one I missed? Uh, number Relationship. Okay, relationships, anyone can tell me anything about that? A specific behavior. Let's say, let's, let's put communication. What do you think about communication as a specific behavior that rain, reinforce and support the pillar of um, relationship? Um, if we're talking about communication, what would you like to say? I think that if you want a good relationship, you need to be able to communicate with somebody. Yes. yes. What about the pillar of family? Give me a specific behavior, one, only one. Uh, when we're talking, I mentioned the pillar of family. Okay, let's say if I, if I ask you, for example, affection, what would you like to uh, say about a specific behavior that reinforce or support that pillar when we mention family. If I have seniors, they can also answer that, that way they can help in um, the cadets. It's gonna be okay. What about the pillar of family? How about we just keep our family close and keep in contact and reach out to our family at all times, make sure they're doing well as well as we are. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Okay, which pillar has supported you the most during this time of change and isolation? I want one of the cadets. Which pillar has supported you the most during this time of change 
and isolation. If you're thinking about mind, about, about body, spirit, family, relationship, from all those five pillars, I would like to know which one has support you the most. You know, like myself, I, I can say spirit and family because family are, are being together more than before because of the pandemic, because of the situation, because people looking to each other. And when we're talking about family, not only the immediate family, but my church, my people from my church. So that's, that's one of the pillars that is supporting me the most during this time. And when I mention spirit, because you keep closer and you try to do your best to keep closer, you know, uh, to the Lord, so that way you, you're going to be there uh, thinking and knowing what you should do in between one thing and another. So I would like anyone, and actually would like at least three cadets, telling me which pillar has supported you the most during this time. Hey, good morning, Colonel Mom. Not at this uh, morning. And I would have to say that the pillar that most supported me during this time of quarantine uh, time of instability and uh, uncertainty would be the uh, pillar of mind. And uh, when it comes to having a strong mind in a time of crisis, you have to look out for not only yourself, but for those around you. Everyone's confused. Uh, there could be a lot of conflict arising. You have to be mentally sound and stable in order to um, correctly and appropriately deal with such situations to make it through this. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. That's, that's really good. Another two um, cadets, please. Remember, cadet, in order for you to get, you know, your promotion is not only to just be present. Think that you are right now in front of me in the classroom. And remember, I used to uh, encourage you to participate. Um, mostly all the time, I have like 90% of people like answering questions and participating. So uh, I don't think this question is difficult. So. Um, I really would like to have two other cadets. Uh, I know we need to move on because we have more uh, other stuff to do. Uh, can I have other two cadets giving me an answer for this last question? Hi, again, Colin. You said which pillar has supported me the most? Yes. I would say mine because I have to be mentally stable in order to, I guess, manage the stress that's been put on me since I've been working more and going to school online and stuff like that. Okay, thank you so much. Someone else? I need another cadet. Uh, why the list? Do you have the name for the cadet? Could you name someone else because I don't have the list in front of me? Certainly, yes. So we do have some cadets that are shy. Um, if you don't want to speak up, you can answer the question right there in chat. I'm gonna go ahead and share the question one more time to give you a little bit of uh, a moment to think about it. The question is, which pillar has supported you the most during this time of change and isolation? Remember what the pillars are. They are mind, body, relationships, spirit, and family. Who'd like to go next? Remember to unmute. Um, uh, remember to can you say that one more time? Family. Family, got it. What do you want to say about family? Um, being together with my family has kept me sane and, and happy to like, I think all my some people because like they live really far away. They can um hang out like uh, uh, parents. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much. Yep, and uh, Colonel, I want you to know that was Braylon Espinal that uh, volunteered that. That was very brave of you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Okay, next one, please. Uh, on this one, I just uh, would like to, um, oh yeah, I forgot that I had this other question. But anyway, can we have relationships with people that we do not know? Why or why not? So we're looking for another uh, volunteer to answer this question. It's right there on the screen. Um, in my opinion, I believe that you can and can't have relationships with people that you don't know. Um, you can because it helps you work on 
you being more social, but also it can be dangerous because not everyone's mind is where it needs to be. Yeah, I would like to add to that. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, uh, honestly, um, it's asking about you had that relation, you know, with someone that you don't know. In a way, uh, mostly, uh, the answer should be in a way, no. Why? Because, why or why not? Why not? Because for you to have a relation with someone, you need to communicate, you need to understand each other, you, you, you need to be like what the relation said that. These two people, they know each other, they talk, they communicate, they connect, they, they take care of each other. And if we're talking about someone who's a stranger, um, really, it's really, you know, with people that you do not know, it's really difficult because they don't know you, you don't know them, you know, and in a way, well, we have to be very careful about it. So how can strangers help us live the core values. I know this one is a little difficult one, but I would like to make sure that you guys understand how can stranger people that you don't know, people that you have no relation with them, no communication, they are completely, completely strangers, help us live the core values. Think about the core values and try to figure out um, what um, should be the answer. Good morning. So I want to say that. Mm -hmm. Strangers can help us live our core values. This is Pastor Isa, right? Yes. So with our core value of like um, volunteer service, you're out here in the community and you're helping and serving your community and you most likely don't know every single person in your community, so they would be strangers. So you're helping strangers in your community and that's also serving in your core values. Okay, thank you so much. That means you understand the question. Like right now, when you guys going outside and helping with the uh, COVID-19, you helping, right? Strangers, people that you don't know at all. People that they could be good people, could be bad people. You have no idea, could be a child molester. In other words, you are serving those people. And now you see the different way when, 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 when we went from one question to another one. Yeah, how can, can strangers help us? They're helping us because they let us doing what we're supposed to be doing when we um using the core values. We show excellence. We, we, we show the volunteer service and all that stuff that are in the core values because we're not doing that only with people that we know. We're doing that all the time because we have to demonstrate that we are one civil air patrol and we're doing what is supposed to be not only the best for us, for our family, but for those who are strangers. And actually, I know taking the right precautions that I know when you got by serving and doing what you're doing, always you've been trained by your seniors and safety people that is letting you know, you know, what you need to do and how you need to like look at you know, your surroundings, like when we do air shows, you know, remember, we are over there in the open, and it's the same thing, but we show the core values to the strangers, to the people around, because they're looking for us, they want to know who are CAP people. Next one, he said, how does the pillar of the relationship apply to strangers? And remember the pillar of, of relationship? Uh, let me, let me get the what is under there it's going to be easy to understand that okay communication connectness social support and teamwork how that apply so the question is how does the pillar of relationships apply to strangers anyone I I just wanted to I mean, say for this question, like, you can build new bonds with strangers that you find around the way. Yes, yes, because remember, you want to support social support. It says social support, right? So you want to support not only the people that you know, you want to support strangers doing what you're doing, whatever way you're helping. 
you're going to need in a way to have a communication, you know, with that person that is right in front of you that you don't know. Like I said, you're going to take the precautions and you're going to know what to do. You're not going to be by yourself. Always you're going to have a witness with you and you already been trained. So communication, you know, with a stranger. So that is, that is one of the, of the um, answers. The communication, the social support, and team, teamwork. Because if you work it as a teamwork, you're going to demonstrate that by helping, doing, uh, give guidance to that stranger. Thank you so much. And we're almost done. Next one, please. On this one, I would like to just uh, remind you, cadets, that Cadet Unique Character Development Participation Credit to promote may submit a copy of a complete worksheet to the squadron commander, the police commander for cadets, chaplain or character development instructor in trust or for promotional credit. Uh, what we're talking about, we're talking about the next, um, this is gonna be your homework, the next page, please. And this is what you guys gonna fill it out and send it to your commander for credit for the class. Have you all see, you see, all the five pillars and they are in blank but that part on the next slide you're going to see that i give it to you in order for you um, to fill that part and to your left side you're going to see all the words over there and actually i'm sorry the family body spirit mind and relationship there over there so that's what you're going to put up Uh, Maldonado, someone uh, muted you by accident. Can you just please unmute your your line? Okay, very good. Okay. Awesome. So I'm gonna okay, I'm gonna start back with this. Okay, no, no, what I was we, we heard trying every, to say. We heard everything except for the last word. I I, oh, no, okay. I did quickly. Yes. Not a problem. So um, try to finish with this page. The cadets, what you guys gonna do? You gonna put on the five pillars, remember, family, body, etc. Those words over there, they're supposed to go under the foundation, one civil patrol, and that is the part that in the next slide, you guys gonna see it in order. So you can do a snapshot, or you can do it whatever way is better for you. So that part for the pillars, I'm giving that to you. But then at the bottom, you see it said list all five pillars and describe one activity that you will do during the next month to support your resiliency during this time. It's a pillar of, and you're going to put family, and the next one, body, and spirit, mind, and then you're going to put over there, you're going to answer that yourself, that I'm not going to tell you what to put. And uh, when you submit the paper to uh, Major Sintrum, he need to see that. He need to see that you really answer those questions. Next one, please. So on the next slide here, you see, you have the top of the answers for your homework. It's completely there. So take a picture. Take a snapshot, whatever way you guys would like to do it, and you want to fill it all exactly the way that is there. Then the other part, the bottom part, remember, that's something you guys going to do yourself. Um, just in case anyone is confused about what I supposed to, what I supposed to put, what I supposed to answer, like um, myself, when I film the paper for me, Let's say the pillar of family, I put on that long line, I put, I will keep a closer relationship with my loved one. You can put whatever you feel, you know, according to your answer. And that's what you need to submit to uh, Major Syndrome for your promotion. Next, please. Well, anyone have any question? I'm sorry. No questions at this time. Thank you. Okay. Um, this is, um, I'm almost done. This is like um, the conclusion for the wrap up for the class. Okay, our decision to serve as a CEP members means we must be mindful of how everything we do impact our fellow citizens. By attending to these relationships, 
and the other pillars of resiliency, you will prepare yourself to use stress productively in service. I couldn't see. In service to our, to our communities and nations. Next one, please. On this one, I would like to have, could be just one cadet because time is running, to uh, read the notable quotes instead of me. Can I have a volunteer, please? So we're looking for five or six volunteers. Who'd like to go first? I will go. Thank you. You want me to read the whole thing or just one? Uh, go ahead and read one. Ah, the whole thing, please. Oh, read the whole thing. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, because that way, you know, we, I think we extended a little bit. And I would like to give uh, a chance to the other people to continue sure. with the rest of whatever they have for today. Thank you so much. Go for it. Okay. Upon the conduct of each depends the fate of all. Alexander the Great. Solidarity is based on the principle that we are willing to put ourselves at risk to protect each other, Starhawk. The purpose of human life is to serve and show compassion and the will to help others, Albert Schweitzer. We must indeed all hang together, or most assuredly, we shall all hang separately, Benjamin Franklin. We must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools, Martin Luther King Jr. Yes, thank you so much with this. Um, we finished the class and I hope everybody learned something and remember about the importance of the third pillar, relationships. And um, you put that to work and I know you guys been doing that. So um, like I said, uh, everybody um, who's there, I would like to thank you for being there with me and bear with me. Uh, you have a great day. God bless you all and see you next time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for the seniors also. Thank you, Colonel Maldonado. So everyone, um, at this time, we're going to take a short break. Uh, again, the weather is beautiful, so we don't want to hold you longer than necessary. The break that we're going to have is going to be about five minutes. That means, take a look at the time, we'll be back at 11.18 a.m. Five minute okay, break. You. Give you enough time to have a bio break and uh, get something to drink. Let me get a coffee. <laughs> Muy bien. Okay. I'm actually thankful for that. Oops, because I just realized what time it is. Hi. <laughs> Let's get back to our program, everybody. Um, so at this time, if you're back from break, let me know that you are by sending me a little note right there in chat. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. So uh, right after break, we do have our um, additional um, information. So I'm going to now bring in our uh, Lieutenant Richter. We're going to talk about the Aerospace Education Project. Good morning. So yes, Aerospace Education Project, we are going to do breakout rooms in a couple minutes. Are there any general questions that we have so far? You can either put it in the text chat or directly any questions if you could just give a little summary about the aerospace education project just like the vision and what we're working on okay so the aerospace education project I can hear the you. aerospace education project we are working on creating our own airline now remember this airline has to be it could be something simple as you want to make an airline like spirit or American Delta United so you are going to build this portfolio of information and present this portfolio to the board of a bank, which is going to consist of myself, um, Lieutenant Pastoriza, Lieutenant Salas, and a few other people. And we will be grading you on your presentation. And then we will we'll see who is the winner of the three groups. You need to come up with a name for your airline. Name for the air, come up with a name for the airline. And then you need to come up with locations of where you want to go. So Hawaii to New York, or New York to Texas. Or you can do multiple routes, like New York, Texas, and California, let's say. Or more sections. You can go outside the country. You can go to New York to Texas to Hawaii to China. Or you can go over the 
you could go over the North Pole and take a shortcut to uh, Asia. With that in mind, you need to be consider considering the type of aircraft you want to buy. If you're going long distance, you're going to need a plane that can go long distance, qualified, and has enough fuel to go long distance. And then you also have to consider how many passengers you want to have on each flight. You want to be exclusive and do first class only flights. And the rich and famous people can do that. Do you want to pack in everybody like cattle into a plane and see how many people you can fit into a plane? But people will be probably very annoyed with that. Uh, for those of you who have been on aircraft and thought about, I wish they had this on this flight. And I wish the food tasted better. But we all know that food on a plane is just going to be bad because of the pressure difference. So food will taste different at different altitudes. If you go to Mount Everest, the food will taste different. Because food is designed to taste good at sea level pressure. So something to think about. Uh, with other things like federal aviation regulations, you need to have a certain amount of uh, flight attendants per amount of people you carry. Or if you don't want to worry about that at all, you can go with cargo. Uh, a lot of cargo is flying right now. You probably wouldn't have been affected by a pandemic like this because you're shipping stuff like FedEx or UPS. You can come up with a cargo airline. Uh, you could do uh, corporate jets, do corporate life. Totally different structure. It's more of a the customer calls and you pull out the plane, wash it off, and get it on the air. With that, you need to come up with like maybe a logo. Next week, I will pull up my my presentation that I've made and my innovations. But I also want to hear with the groups we're going to break out into. When I go to your group, I want to hear some of the ideas you're going with and see if you're understanding the project and what is required in this project. But for now, are there any general questions so far? I don't see any questions in chat. Uh, cadets and seniors, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask now. Soon we will break out to your own meeting room. So just keep in mind that you are competing against the other groups and you will need to come up with something different or new or a better way of uh, saving costs. I mean, you're presenting this to a bank who's or a bunch of uh, high dollar people who are trying to fund and you want to get their funding. So this will also help you if you ever need to do a presentation to like a board of trustees for your company, a job, and say, hey, I got this idea. This is how much it's going to cost. This is how much you're saving, and this is how much you're making. Going to make in the end, you should invest in me. If you wanted to start your own business, this is the kind of presentations so you're going to need to know. If you're trying to propose a new project to your your group of bosses or something, and you want to be the head of this this project, these are the kind of things that you're going to have to show and be able to present. Uh, even with uh, college presentations. You're going to need to be able to do PowerPoint presentation. So we're going to give you a rundown on how to do a good PowerPoint presentation in the coming weeks. Stay tuned. The breakout rooms are now in the chats. So if you go to the breakout rooms, make sure you get your group. And you can head out to the breakout rooms now. We will be coming back in. So now that we're back in the main room, I'm going to say next week, I'm going to do my presentation. And I'm going to show you what I did for my project and my airline. So we'll keep up on that and you'll get to see what I did for my project. So, but I think a lot of you are in the right track. You have your names, you have your, you're starting to think about pricing on aircraft and where you want to go. Keep in mind you have an unlimited budget, but within reason. I mean, you are trying to out competitor all these, other, these two other groups that you're going against. So. That's it. Over to you, Lieutenant Certainly. Okay, so we do have a few announcements that we want to share. I'm not sure if everybody realizes, but we do have a special day today. Richter, would you like to talk about the fact that today is our two year anniversary? The squadron has been active for two years today, and we were supposed to have a big party. Yay!
Uh, we're going to have our parties at home. Major Pastor Ego, would you like to say anything? Um, actually, um, thank you, everybody. I was uh, going in and out over uh, the meeting you guys were doing today. Uh, thank you to Lieutenant Colonel Maldonado for that uh, very nice class today about um, the five pillars. And uh, it's something that I wanted to make, um, you know, great participation from all the cadets, uh, great safety briefing by uh, Lieutenant Rolivo as well. Uh, but I, I just wanted to share this with the cadets and also the seniors, if we work and responsibility. Um, and to make the unit work, we have to have a lot of teamwork. Um, trust me, it's, it's, it's hard enough to run the squadron and, and, have, and, and have the cadets engage and, and be promoted. So imagine how hard it can be for, for a group. And right now, without, without the teamwork that, that we have between Colonel Maldonado and myself, to run nine squadrons in the group, it would never work. I mean, the responsibility that we have and, and how we apply the five pillars to, to our jobs is, um, is amazing. So um, this is for all the cadets out there listening right now. You know, teamwork and responsibility is going to take you to the next level on your CAP career. Um, so take advantage of, of, of the character development classes because they, they're, they're very important and it's going to help you out. You know, other than that, you know, happy two-year anniversary to Camden Cutter Squadron. Um, I was part of also with uh, Major Sintron and, um, you know, in the initial process of opening the squadron. Um, we did it. We made it happen. And now it's being run by you guys. You know, Wadali, Basarisa, Richter, Palas, everybody out there is running the squadron. Um, so, you know, happy anniversary to you guys, too. And that's what I have. Wonderful. Thank you. So I, I know that we are still going forward with encampment for this year, 2020. So I'd like to ask, um, Lieutenant Falas, would you be able to share with us maybe just a few details about that? Um, I do have the registration link available to share with everyone. The basic encampment, it's, the link is open now. Uh, it's from 18th to the 25th. It's a special opportunity for those of you that want to advance to the second lieutenant rank, become an officer. Um, it's going to help you out a lot. You're going to have like a fun experience. You're going to be basically meet uh, cadets from all over New Jersey and possibly out of the state, like I've done something for New York, uh, possibly Florida as well. Um, the Leadership Academy, um, I have yet to research on that. I want to give you any wrong answers. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. Now, um, for everybody that's listening, I don't know everyone's name who's actually registered to go to encampment. Um, we do have um, a few things that we want to share with you. Uh, first, um, there is a cost to go to encampment, but if you actually applied, I know that there is some financial aid available. I believe the registration for that or the uh, information for that might still be open. Uh, for those of you that are concerned about having the uniforms necessary, I believe we can still order them online. So I'm just bringing up uh, the point of encampment because again, it's still moving forward. Uh, we have a big role to play with that. The dates are right there on the screen. It's from Saturday to Saturday, so it's July 18th through July 25th. The registration is done through Eventbrite. What that does is it sends us an email with your basic information. Besides registration, you will have to complete additional forms. So, you know, of course, in order for you guys to get promoted, one of the requirements is encampment. So I don't want anybody here to miss that opportunity. Um, you know, there are different requirements as well for you to get promoted. Uh, do we have anyone on our call that would like to talk about the promotion requirements? Any senior member or cadet leader? Um, I would like to set again that for the promotions, they need, I know promotions is um, every two months. Um, for them to be promoted, at least they're supposed to have one CDI class between those two months in order to get promoted. That doesn't mean that they don't need to do both. I mean, every month, but at least one every two months is necessary for the promotion. If they don't have it, that's gonna hold up the promotion. 
Very good. So what I want to do is just check with our audience, right? For those of you that are listening, um, some of you have already submitted your registration, which is great. Uh, so go ahead and tell us, tell us either in chat or unmute your line, which of our cadets are going to encampment? What are your plans? Um, I will be and what is your name? What is my name? Yeah, I want you to announce yourself for the recording. Um, Maya, I'm a cadet, South Park and Rodriguez. Wonderful, thank you. I will be attending encampment. Your name and I, I am cadet staff sergeant Velez. Wonderful, thank you. I see in chat we also have cadet staff sergeant. Camilla Rivera Borges, who also says that she's attending. Also, Cadet uh, Staff Sergeant Jaylene Rivera Borges will be attending. I have a few other names here. I won't mention them just so that we can get their own confirmation. Um, but at this time, I just want to open it up for a, a few members who are going to speak up. I believe, uh, Horner, you have an announcement that you'd like to make? Yes, ma'am, I do. And while we are on the topic of facing encampment uh, and the current uh, status of the country, a $300 scholarship will be available to applicants, um, I'm assuming immediately once the uh, senior leadership sends the email out. Um, it's for, it's to cover the cost of basic encampment and or uniform accoutrements uh, that may be required as a cadet. And um, that's, that's pretty much it. All, app, all applicants are encouraged to apply. Um, the details will be sent out in an email. Okay, great. So we'll look forward to that. So those $300 that you're mentioning, I just want to be clear, this is in addition to the, the grant monies that have already been um, made available to our squadron. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. So may I just ask, is that a personal contribution? Uh, that is correct, it is. Okay. So everybody, you just heard it here live. Um, we are going to receive an additional amount of money to help with anyone that's having trouble with uh, making it to encampment. So we would just want to make sure you're aware, you know, if you have any issue or if you're just not sure how to uh, proceed, let us know because registration is only open for a limited time. It is actually getting full um, and we don't want any of you to, to miss out. So let us know. You can ask any of your leaders um, or any of the senior members. Hey, this is Mayor Pastor Rita. I, it's not a question, but I just want to ask the Horner. Um, okay, I, I just wanted to ask because the Lieutenant Colonel Horner for the one for the cadets that doesn't know uh, the Lieutenant Colonel Horner. Um, he's been on the program for about five or six years now. Um, he already finished phase four. Um, he's the cadet that went to cadet officer school, and even though that he haven't been asked to going to the meeting because of uh, college and work, but this is this is a great um, thing that he's doing. This is coming out of his own money to support uh, his fellow cadets. So I just wanted everybody to um, um, note this, that this is not coming from um, a company or any agency. He just giving back uh, to the squad and he's giving back to the community. He, this is a, this is a true... Uh, Examples of what is to be a leader when you can do it every now and then, and just the fact that he's doing this coming out of his heart, it says a lot about the cadet. So uh, on my behalf, Colonel Corner, uh, Horner, I just want to give you a big thank you. So thank you. And thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And um, if I may add, uh, throughout the time in quarantine, I've, I've had a lot of time to reflect on my cadet career and you know, all the experiences that have helped mold me into the person I am today. And when I take a look at uh, the cadets and the squadron, when I uh, when I do show, when I have uh, the ability to, I see a lot of myself in them and a lot of themselves in me. And it's it's really interesting having this this sort of viewpoint because there's a level of clarity that was not a, uh, not established before, something I couldn't see before, but now that it's clear. The choices that I make now and the choices that will later affect um, this one cadet, um, it's exponential. And, and you know, eventually, with the maturing of the cadet in the cadet program and as a human being um, 
they will come to understand why we don't we do uh, what it means to truly be you know, a cadet in civil air patrol truly commendable i thank you i thank you horner and thank you major Passeriza, for for your words as well that's excellent it's exciting all right so um, next, we are going to give a, a few announcements. Um, I do know that there's something exciting happening in the Connecticut wing. So, Lieutenant Richter, could you share some, some insights about that? Yes, recently, if you got the uh, newsletter, that the Connecticut wing has been working with uh, what they call Operation Bird Dog to demonstrate civil air patrol capabilities in aerial anti-terrorism force protection. The naval base in New London, uh, Gruton, that's in Connecticut. The exercise is also designed to train U.S. Navy's new submarine commanders through the opposing force simulated events. Uh, the, the staff took place at May 5th uh, exercise, and they used five cap airplanes to search for submarines off the coast. So one of these day, days, you get your qualifications to be the mission uh, scanner or um, mission uh, operator, or eventually a pilot when you become a senior member. You can go out on these missions, and hopefully uh, you'll have more of these missions, and you can, you can check them out and see what's going on. So very exciting. There's still people doing uh, missions out there, and hopefully we'll be able to do missions soon. So keep your qualification. That's really encouraging because um, sometimes we don't, you know, we're meeting virtually, so, you know, a lot of this can be routine, um, but it's really important to stay in tune and connected with what everyone else is doing so that we know that there's potential for us to get involved as well. So that's really, really good information. Thank you for bringing it up. Now, for those of you listening, if you're not receiving the newsletter, this is where we say, let us know. We want to make sure you're getting all the communication as well. Okay, with that said, I'm going to now talk about some upcoming items, um, so bear with me. I do wanna just uh, talk about what's happening next week. Um, I'll give uh, Richter a moment for that. But I, I wanna first say that for me, I'd like to sponsor someone. Um, so a quick surprise is that we have been keeping track of those of you that are in uniform, believe it or not. We have been keeping track of your participation, and for me personally, I'd like to recognize someone. So next week, I will announce who we are picking at random. We're looking for your participation. We're looking for your um, you know, uniform. And if you don't have ABUs, BUs, then of course the PT uh, t-shirt is appropriate. So again, next week, I will be announcing one winner. And what I'm gonna do is uh, deliver to you, wherever you are, a meal from either Uber Eats or uh, Grubhub, something of your liking, and it'll be delivered next week. So again, uh, get ready. We're looking for you guys to be prepared, um, and I will give you uh, that gift just because you guys are all doing such a fantastic job. Keeps you on your toes, if anything. So, Richter, if you could uh, talk about what's happening next week, and we'll check to see if we have Major also on the call. Uh, next week, we're going with the, the Aerospace Education Project. We are going to present my, present, uh, my presentation that I presented for this, so you get an idea of what's going on. We are also going to hopefully have a guest speaker, and more to come on that next week, so we'll leave that a surprise. We have also uh, upcoming, we're still working on getting the inter-squadron uh, call with New Mexico, or not New Mexico, uh, Puerto Rico, sorry. So we're still working on that. We just did a test for that, and hopefully we'll get that together. Uh, just start thinking about questions that you're gonna have with them. We're going to have some time, uh, our cadets and their cadets, they're going to be able to talk back and forth 
and you can ask some questions about what's going on down there. They'll probably be asking questions about what's going on over here. So just get your thoughts in line for that. We'll probably have that up uh, as soon as possible when you get a notification. So keep up in your emails. Um, just think about those questions that you're going to ask. So uh, I know Major Citron's on the cell phone right now. Are you there, sir? Okay. Uh, uh, first, I just want to say um, um, on my on behalf of my staff and, and all the cadets, you know, um, uh, thanks for us uh, celebrating our second year anniversary, and um, let's keep up the good work so we can hit that third one. Um, I want to say thank you to Lieutenant Colonel Horner for what you're doing for the cadets. Like I say, um, they're really going to appreciate it. And um, on behalf of, of the group commander, too, on on you know, donating and matching um, Horner's um, match for the cadets. So. Let's stay here, um, keep everybody safe and stay in touch. Um, for all the cadets, just keep in mind that, um, and, and our staff that in the next two weeks, um, we will be having our uh, virtual meeting with the unit in Puerto Rico. Uh, we are, we are going to set the date and the time and we will pass that information to you. So that's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Colonel, uh, Maldonado, any final thoughts? No, I just want to say thank you for everything, for your help and cooperation uh, for each and every one who was there, you know, in my class. Uh, I see you soon, guys. God bless. Mm -hmm. um, let's and happy anniversary. <laughs> yes. Major Salmonson, I know that you've been on. Would you like to say any words? Um, yes, happy anniversary. I, I joined the squad when they first started off. Also, so been a great two years so far. That's it. And have a good weekend and have fun. Any final thoughts from any other senior member? Um, Olivo, Falas, anyone else? No, we're good. All right. So this concludes our session for today. Thank you all for attending. Um, Richter, if you could just dismiss all the cadets. Lieutenant Falas, you can dismiss the cadets. That's y'all free to go. I'm the one.